As a web professional, I'm sure you're ex as excited as I am about CSS3. And you'll remember that in Dreamweaver CS5.5, we introduced support for CSS3. And with Dreamweaver 6, we continue that support and even add a few new options. Let's have a look. Now, here I am in my Pluralist page where I've got my Pluralist logo up here at the, the top of the page. But it's not exactly the way that the designer called out. The designer wanted some rounded corners here at the bottom. But of course, to do that, uh, in the past, I would have had to use an image. But today with CSS3, of course, we can do a lot of these great graphic effects without actually generating images using CSS3. So let's go ahead and do that here. I've selected my logo rule. And what I'd like to do is just add a property. And that property, of course, is my border radius property. So I can, again, just pop the, my list open, scroll up to the top to find border radius. Of course, if I know how to type it, I could type it just as quickly. In fact, I do know how to type it. So let's go ahead and do that because it is a long list of great new properties that we have with uh, CSS3. But I'm simply going to say border radius. And as I tab, you'll remember in Dreamweaver CS5.5, we introduced this little icon here to help us create the syntax for these CSS3 properties. I'll click the button and see, oh, do I want corners on all four sides or do I just want to uh, do individual corners? Let's go ahead and just do the bottom right. Uh, let's maybe uh, test it out. Uh, that's one of the great things about the, this panel is I can actually begin to experiment. And you'll notice uh, as we look back over here at the Pluralist logo, we're actually seeing that change already taking place. 30 is probably way too much, and my designer would kill me if I did that. So let's just make it 10 pixels on the bottom left and on the bottom right. And with that, we're done. And we've created a nice rounded effect that, again, would have required an image in the past. But sometimes it gets even more complex. And then uh, there's, a, there's a lot more that you have to be thinking about. Well, that is unless you know a secret. And I'm going to let you in on the secret right now. I've got a badge down here, this plural to go badge. And you'll notice that behind the scenes, it sort of looks like there's a rounding happening over here uh, just on that one corner. I want to get that rounding. And I also need the background, which happens to be a gradient. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've tried the gradient syntax, you know that it's, oh, it's crazy. Uh, and, and it seems like it changes every time I, I, I get it memorized. And so instead of even trying to remember the syntax anymore, I use the trick. Let's, uh, let's go over into Fireworks CS6. In Fireworks CS6, I'll just zoom out so you can see this is, in fact, the, the layout that the designer provided me. We'll zoom back in here on that plural to go area. Now, I want to take this entire box, that entire shape, and again, rebuild that as CSS instead of using an image. In the past, again, that would have been a complicated process. But with Fireworks CS6, I can simply select the object and then go up to my window menu and choose to open up my CSS properties. The CSS properties panel is going to show me the CSS necessary to build that shape. You'll notice as I begin to sort of click around on, on individual pieces and areas, you can see that it's, it's changing because it's telling me what those individual items are in CSS. Now, I have the option of several possibilities here where I can take all of the things, the width, the height, the border radius, the gradient, everything. And if, if that's what I'm after, I can simply click all to collect them all onto the clipboard. Now, the other possibility is to uncheck the properties or the, uh, the browsers that I'm not interested in. If I, for example, was only going to WebKit mobile-based browsers, I wouldn't need all of those others. But of course, I'm going to go ahead and take them all and cover all my bases. But instead of taking the width and height, because I've already got that defined over in my CSS, I'm just going to select the border radius, hold down my command or control key there to do a multi-select and take the gradient. And then I'll just copy those selected properties. We'll head back over into Dreamweaver. And now I'm going to take my plural to go. And I want that entire uh, uh, emblem, if you will, the, that item here. So I'm just going to select that rule. And I'll go to code, which will give me my split view. And here you can see the code that I've already written. And now I'll just place my cursor into that spot and paste. Now as we go back over and take a look at our emblem, we now have a beautiful rounded corner on the top 
on the bottom and that beautiful gradient that our designer was after without ever having to remember all of that complicated gradient syntax. One last thing that you might have noticed. This text, it's certainly, oh, it's real text, but it certainly doesn't look like any web safe font that I've ever seen. And that's true because another great thing about CSS3 is the ability to use real fonts, not just those standard five or six fonts that we've been stuck with all these years. Now, there's a couple of ways to go about that. One, of course, is through the Typekit service. Uh, and of course, I would encourage you to, uh, to do that. Um, check out Typekit. There's a, a boatload of fonts there. But if you don't want to use that, uh, the Typekit service and you want to have the fonts locally on your own server, then there's also that option as well. And we've added support for it right here in Dreamweaver CS6. See, what I'm going to do is, first of all, in my site definition, I'm simply going to go to my advanced settings where you'll notice the web fonts section. And that's going to simply point Dreamweaver at where I want to store my web fonts. Now I can begin adding fonts. So I'm going to go up to my modify menu and choose my web fonts command. And then I'm going to say, I want to add a font. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is give the font a name. Uh, this is going to be Madrone is the, the font that I'm going to use. And then pick one of the formats that I'm interested in. So I'll just take my EOT and I've got my Madrone folder right here. And I'm just simply going to select that. And you'll notice that as I do so, Dreamweaver has already seen the other fonts and has listed them for me. Now the last thing is, and the most important thing actually, about using fonts on the web is you have to have a license for them. And that means a license to use them on the web. And so Dreamweaver is going to make sure that we have that. And when I click my checkbox, the OK button is going to be enabled. And I can say, great, now I'm done. And now I can begin using Madrone as part of my font families. And the moment I do so, Dreamweaver is going to copy those files over into my own site definition for me. So as you can see, there's a lot of great things happening with CSS3. And of course, Dreamweaver CS6 is right there to support you.